Hello everybody, my name is Dmitry Lobanov. I am curator of entomology collections at the Manchester Museum. Today we are going to talk about uh, invasive species, particularly about harlequin ladybird. And our guest today is Don Stenhouse, curator of natural sciences at the Bolton Museum. Hello Don. Hello Dimitri. Uh, when did this species actually arrive to the UK? Um, it, it arrived in, in the United Kingdom in 2004 although um, it previously uh, um, turned up in other European countries, it turned up in, in Belgium before that and the um, and, and it also been introduced into North America previously and um, it's, 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 now, it's now known as, as um, an invasive, it's an invasive species basically and, and um, the, uh, it's, it's spreading all over the place, not just, not just in the UK, it's... Um, what is the natural area of distribution of the species? Well, orig originally it's from, um, it's from eastern, the eastern part of uh, Asia, it's from places like Kazakhstan, and it's also found in China, um, and basically the, 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 um, towards the, um, well, the, the eastern Palearctic, I suppose, and, and, and parts of Asia. Uh, further, further now, um, it, it's uh, it's been deliberately in some places introduced as a as a, as a control of pest species. Um, so it's it's a exotic. It's not really supposed to be in in the West. No, it's not good for the British fauna. No, and there are numerous papers um, by people such as Helen Roy, who works for the um, the, the research council in uh, down south, and uh, that, that clearly indicates. The, the harlequin ladybird has had a drastic impact on native species in the UK and in other countries such as Belgium and Switzerland and they've been involved in a collaborative study with ecologists in this country looking at the, the distribution of the harlequin ladybird and its impact and it, it's, known to have an, it's known to have had an effect on eight native species um, in, in, the, in those countries I've just mentioned and they, they include species such as the two-spot ladybird, the um, seven-spot ladybird, um, and other other others, including a species that, that, that doesn't actually eat aphids, which the harlequin ladybird does, uh, because it not only has an impact by directly competing for food, it also has an impact because it predates other ladybirds. It it it's, it's it predates other ladybird larvae. And the harlequin ladybird larvae are actually cannibalistic. They will eat their own, and they will eat other ladybird larvae. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it has, an, has an effect because it competes for food. It's, it's predaceous. Um, it comes out early in the year. It, it goes into hibernation late in the year. And there are numerous reasons why it has a negative impact. But if it's so effective in eating other, other uh, insects, including ladybirds and uh, green flies, if I understood correctly, aphids, Maybe it's still good to have it here because it still consumes aphids, as in, you know. Yeah, but what, what it's actually reducing, though, is the viability of populations of other ladybirds. Because it is so dominant, although it has a, it, it, it has a positive effect in the, fact, in, in the way that it eats, other, it eats aphids, it's reducing, the, it's reducing the availability of that food for other aphid species. So basically, it's stifling the population and it's, it's reducing the biodiversity. Um, ba basically, the populations of other ladybirds are being kept down. Be, um, and it, it's, the, the, the overall effect is, is negative because uh, you haven't got the same... You've got one, one species, basically, that is dominating the, the, um, the, 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 the aphid-eating guild, if you call it. Yeah, yeah. Is it common in uh, ur urban environment or it's common in natural... Uh Habitat, it's, it's, as well. it's common everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. It's, it's not particularly uh, fussy about where it lives yeah. and in fact apparently city life benefits the, 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 the harlequin ladybird mm -hmm. and in, in fact I found one in our apartment yesterday. Mm -hmm. We had one crawling around oh, in the oh, window. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, how widespread is this species in the UK? Well I've, I've got some, some maps here that show that um, in, in, in 2004, we came into southeast England, and by 2008, um, it, it, it already reached the um, reached well into Scotland, and now the, the distribution is is is, is well, it's, it's almost everywhere, and 
Yeah, it looks like that in, in, in 2000, the latest map we have, it's almost half of the country is covered. The yeah, and the, 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 the fact is that it's probably limited to a certain extent by, by temperature. Uh, what would be your forecast? Will these species continue to, to ex expand it, its range or it may stop at some particular point? Well, it's, it's here to stay, that's for sure. And finally, I just want to show our visitors this little box of insects, which was acquired recently during the course of our uh, thematic collecting uh, project at the Manchester Museum. And specimens which are in, uh, displayed in this box uh, were collected from around Manchester in 2015. So this species is already here. It's widespread and quite common. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It's a very interesting story. And I think we uh, could learn a lot.